Click, 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 click. Number seven, the Nikon F100. So it doesn't look like a film camera. Looks like a digital SLR. Yeah, it does. But it is a film camera and it's a beast of a film camera as well. This was actually the last uh, film camera that I used before going digital uh, back in the early 2000s. Uh, they stopped producing this camera in 2006, uh, which was a, sh a shame because it's one of the best cameras uh, I ever used on film. I used the F5. I was working at a photographer that used the F100. That's why I got why I got this camera. Uh, but he was using this as a back uh, backup camera for his F5, uh, and it's like a little brother to the F5, same kind of features and so on. And I mean, it's, it's obviously an AF camera, an autofocus camera. Got incredible AF. It's they call it a semi-professional camera, uh, but I feel it's uh, as professional as my DF or d4 in some ways it's got some of the same features basically maybe it doesn't feel as robust i i think it's not a totally weather seal as well as the d4 with the other weather seal cameras but i mean it feels very robust and, and well built for me you can shoot up to 8000 in shadow speed which is incredible for film you can shoot 4.5 frames a second which is uh, incredible on film and that's without the uh, battery grip if you add that i i don't know i'm not sure how many maybe five frames a second so your 36 uh, frames <laughs> will be out finished uh, very fast so be careful of that uh well it's too pack uh, feature pack to to mention all the features but it's it's totally customizable you can customize like back button photo focus uh, that i have on my digital slrs as well get spot metering exposure compensation you can show it in aperture or shadow priority modes you can do it all on this camera and uh, that is why it takes number seven uh, on my list uh, the biggest pro if we get into the pros right away is that it's compatible with my Nikon DF, for example. So I can actually choose the same lenses. The newer G lenses will work on the F100, as well as the older lenses as well. So if I use my uh, Nikon DF, for example, and I have this one, I can switch lenses between them, which is a very big pro for me. And that's why this camera, the F100, has a pretty unique uh, place in my uh, among my camera gear and among my film cameras as well. I don't use it as much uh, because it doesn't inspire me in the same way as the other film cameras, but it's the right, the only tool for some of the work that I want to do with it, uh, like some types of portraiture or maybe I don't want to waste uh, uh, some film that they don't produce anymore, like the Fuji 400H. I shot a lot with this camera. Because I didn't want to waste all the rolls of film on a camera that I'm not sure how the exposure is going to be like and so on. So if I want total control, uh, or not total control, it's never that with the film or any camera, I suppose. But as close as you can get, I will use the F100. And uh, it's then it's the only film camera that, uh, that I'm using as a tool for that, for that job. Uh... I mean, it's also totally compatible with my flashes and so on, which is very nice. You can use the SB uh, flashes on there, which is nice. So I can use it with the soft boxes and so on if I want to switch between digital and and film. Uh, and it's also, since it's the last film camera I used, it's sort of uh, nostalgic for me. So that's why I, I was one of the first film cameras, actually, that I got when I got back into film again. Uh, the pros, I would, that would be the, the weight. I mean, I already now <laughs> can feel my back get tired, uh, lugging this thing around, this beast around. Uh, even so it's, it's pretty small for a SLR and, uh, with those newer, bigger lenses as well. It's, it's like the thing I want to escape from, uh, shooting digital, uh, you get the same con 
uh, with F100. So that's not a great thing after all. And that's why I'm not using it that much. Uh, but if I want to do something special uh, or use the newer lenses, I have to go with the F100. So that's why it's it's a number. It's on my list. Another con is the sticky back problem. A common issue with this camera. It's not uh, that bad with this with this one, but you can feel it a little bit starting to get a bit sticky here. It's not great, um, but it's not something that will ruin the camera for you. Otherwise, this camera doesn't have a lot of other cons, to be honest. Uh, it's uh, one of the best film cameras I ever used, or best cameras I ever used, actually. So this is also a camera I will always uh, keep, I think, until, it's, until I stop taking uh, photographs. And it feels like it's gonna go on forever as well. I mean, it's so it's so dependable. It's such a robust camera. The Nikon F100, one of the best cameras ever made. Welcome back to spot number six, which is held by this magnificent little camera, the Bessa R2A. Uh, it's an M mount camera, so you can use your, your M lenses on this little beautiful camera. This particular version comes in steel blue, I believe it's called. Uh, you can't see that now since, it's, since we're filming in monochrome. But it looks very industrial, uh, kind of like an old German tank or some, something similar. It looks pretty cool. Uh, got the nice white text here saying it's made in Germany for Voigtlander. Also adds to that sort of machinery or, or uh, almost a little bit World War II look, in my opinion. Looks pretty cool. 
Uh, so it's a fairly new camera. You got uh, four different frame lines, lines that you can choose from. 35, uh, 50, 75, and 90 here with this switch here. Uh, you can go up to 1 slash 2000 in shutter speeds. Uh, you can go up to 3200 in ISO. Uh, you have an on and on switch here, so it just doesn't press the shutter uh, by accident, which is quite nice. What more can I say? Um, you also get an exposure lock here on the back side. It's over here. So it pretty much feel like if you're coming from an SLR, uh, you're going to feel quite at home, I think. Which I think is a nice selling point. But I believe overall the biggest sell selling point, of course, is that you can switch your M-mount lenses. So I have a M4240 digital Leica camera. So what I usually do is uh, I grab the M240 and, and this one, and I'll switch lenses uh, between them, which is pretty handy, I think, that you're able to shoot both film and, and digital out in the field and then use the same lenses. Great stuff. So we kind of already went over some of the, the pros there a little bit, but sort of a, a summary of all that would be the Leica M mount, uh, you get the ability to use shutter priority, uh, you get a nice feeling camera with the grip, with the rubber grip and everything, uh, you get the ability to use up to 2000 shutter speed, a lot of older Leicas I believe go up uh, mostly up until 1000 in shutter speed. So being able to use those Leica lenses and also having the ability to use it more like an SLR with a, uh, all the automatic options is uh, very, very handy, very good, I think. Uh, and all the frame line, the different frame lines as well. If you go for a, an older M3, for example, you only have uh, 35 and 50 and so on, so on. I used to own a Leica M4 that I sold and I sort of always regretted not having a, a film body being able to use the Leica lenses. So for me at the moment this was the next best thing basically. Um, I, I uh, searched the internet for the different kinds of BESA models and I settled for the uh, R2A because I felt, uh, I don't know, I felt like having more automatic options would be very nice. Something that I sort of felt with a like I am for. Uh, it was more with the feel of the camera and the build and so on that made me want to pick it up and shoot with it. But the, the results weren't all that consistent, I felt. So with the, the best R2A, I, I felt uh, I could get the best of both world, worlds, so to speak, if you, if you know what I mean. Uh, I don't know if it makes any sense, but that's how I felt. I haven't shot that much with it, to be honest. I've, I've shot a couple of rolls, mostly in monochrome. I just finished a Kodak Gold as well, and another uh, color film, negative color film is in here now. So I'm kind of evading the result for the color negatives to really get an impression of what it does there. But uh, I'd say the monochrome images I've shot looks very, very good, very crisp. And I mean, the Leica lenses, as you know, are fantastic, most of them. I have two Leica lenses and then I used the uh, Voigtlander 35VM lens, which is also a great lens. So I've used that some on this camera as well. So I need to use it a little bit more, I think, to get a like a really good impression of it. But it makes my list anyway, because <laughs> it's just packed with so many great features. And so far, I love shooting with it. Uh, and it's a great companion to use with my uh, digital Leica M240, which I shoot a lot with. Uh, so overall, uh, it uh, I think it deserves the number six spot. It might climb up higher later on as I use it more. I hope so. Seems like a really good camera to use. And now to the, to the con, which uh, can be a pretty, pretty, pretty bad one. 
for some people at least, and I know it is for, for some people, reading the forums and watching a lot, a lot of other YouTube reviews, I've seen a lot of people complain with that. It's totally battery dependent. So if you are out of batteries, it just dies <laughs> like that, which can be very annoying if you're out shooting, if you don't grab a lot of batteries, which is a, an easy thing considering it's, it takes LR44 batteries. So it uses two. Uh, so just grab a bunch and have it in your bag and, and you'll uh, be good to go all the time. So it's not a big deal for me anyway. So all, all in all and overall, very good camera that uh, jumps into place six. Great. Yeah, we're getting down to spot number five. It's crazy. It's going fast. Getting excited now because this camera needs a little bit more of a dramatic introduction from me. As it was uh, one of two cameras along with the F100 that sort of got me back into film again. And it was the first two cameras uh, that I got when I got back into film again. Uh, it's also Nikon. But this one is a bit more vintage feel than the Nikon F100. And this is the Nikon FE2. Just a beautiful classic Nikon camera from the 80s. It was produced in 1983. And it was announced as a semi-professional, advanced semi-professional camera. It's not as jam-packed as some of the other models like the FM3 and uh, the later SLRs. But it, it touches or it got sort of the sweet spot, I think, in SLRs during that era. The FN2 is a bit more mechanical and uh, it's famous in its own right for being this indestructible beast that you can get take anywhere and without batteries and survives everything. While the FE2 is a little bit more automatic, but you can still use it in manual. So it hits a sweet spot for, for many photographers, I think. And this is actually the camera that I would recommend for any new Nikon shooters or any film shooters to begin with as a camera, because you have the ability to go manual and automatic if you want to. And it takes LR44 batteries and uh, it's pretty easy to, to handle, I think. Especially if you have shot with Nikon before. I mean, nothing feels uh, weird or strange on this camera as well as the FM2 or the FM3. Uh, you got the knobs and buttons and levers, everything is in the right place, I feel. So growing up in the 80s, uh, well, I was born in the 70s, I grew up in the 80s. This is the classic Nikon camera that you would uh, see in the movies, like during the commercials or so on, and maybe while watching MTV and so on. Uh, you will see celebrities using either maybe this one or the FM2. Uh, bringing it on holidays, taking pictures and so on. So it was, a, it was a big part of pop culture when I grew up. 
actually. Which also makes it a little bit more familiar for me uh, going back to. And this was this was always like one of these cameras that I that I wanted when I grew up uh, taking photos when I wanted to shoot a Nikon camera. But back then I was too poor, uh, too young to get one. And at the time I was uh, grown up, uh, they had already passed these cameras, and you get your EOS ones or in the end and the F hundred and so on. So it was a bit too late. But I I always wanted one of these one day. That's what I told myself. So. It was a good thing I got back into film, so I could uh, get the chance to, to hold one of these. And I mean, we already went over some of the key features of the camera, like the uh, titanium shutter and uh, uh, the light meter, the built-in light meter and so on. Here's a pretty cool thing uh, that uh, digital cameras nowadays actually are copying to make the cameras feel more retro, like the Fuji X Pro 3, I uh, seem to recall, got one of these small uh, film flap windows. So here's the real thing, yeah, not the, not the copy. So we, you put your film flap down there to know what uh, kind of film you loaded your camera with. It's pretty cool. So that existed on all those Nikon cameras back in the day. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, it uses the F mount. So like with the Leica M240 I told you about at the other spot uh, for the Bessa, I could use the Bessa and the M240 in tandem to switch lenses and so on. The same thing goes for, uh, for the FE2 and my Nikon DF. So if I want to both shoot film and digital, I would bring my Nikon DF and, and bring uh, the FE2 as well. So that's a very practical reason for me. And also, I mean, if you are into Nikon before and you're, you have shot the Nikkor lenses, you know how, good, how great they are. So being able to use those great Nikkor lenses on both the DF and this one, you know, you will always create beautiful uh, photos as long as you as a photographer behave <laughs> the right way, of course. But you get a very good uh, setup for taking good, good pictures. I know this one is the Voigtlander. Uh, 58 that I reviewed already, so it is it isn't actually the Nikkor lens on here, but some of the classical Nikkor lenses I use the most on the FE2 would be the 28 millimeter f 2.8, uh, the 105 millimeter f 2.5 AIS lens. Uh, yeah, either of those, all those Nikkor lenses are great lenses. The Nikon 35 millimeter f 1.4 is a is a favorite of mine. Took a lot of nice shots, nice photos with F2 that I will show you a little bit later. I mean, so overall, a uh, fantastic camera. And uh, as I would say to anyone, if they are getting into film photography again, I know a lot of other sort of YouTubers and, and uh, forums and stuff are recommending maybe other types of cameras. But for me, uh, this is one of the perfect cameras to get into film photography with. Especially, especially if you have used Nikon, like a digital SLR in the past, everything will feel pretty familiar. Nikon just works, uh, very dependable cameras, and uh, this one is no exception. Great, great camera at number five.